In this presentation, I'm going to talk about minimum spanning tree problems. In your Wayne Winston's textbook, the materials in this presentation corresponds to section 8.6. So in this section, we are going to solve a minimum spanning tree problems. And then we're also learning what a spanning tree is. We need the concept of a spanning tree to solve the problems in the previous section which was the minimum cost network flow problem. So let's start by the definition of a spanning tree. If we have a network with n nodes, a spanning tree is a group of n minus one arcs that connects all nodes in the network and it contains no loops. So it is important here that we have n minus one arcs we connect all nodes in the network and it contains no loops. So let's take a look at this example. Here we have three nodes and then if we have three connecting arcs like 1 to 2, 2 to 3 and 3 to 1, this is not a spanning tree. You can see that we have three arcs here while in the spanning tree we should have n minus 1 arcs. So if the number of nodes is 3, we should have had only 2 arcs. And then you can see it is also a loop. So this is not a spanning tree. However, these three possibilities of arcs, they are, each of them is a spanning tree. So let's take a look at example of the third a spanning tree. So we select the arc from 1 to 3 and then 2 to 3. Okay, this is a tree. If you also, if you chose like um, arcs 1, 2 and 2, 3, it is also a tree. If you choose 1, 2 and 1, 3, it is also a tree. Because uh, we have only two arcs in each of these options and then you can check that they all contain no loops. So these three um, pairs of arcs, they're all spanning trees. Each of them is a spanning tree. Now, in the case of a minimum spanning tree problem, we are trying to find out a spanning tree of minimum length in the network. So we're trying to find among all the possible spanning trees we are trying to find the one that connects all nodes in the network with minimum length. So that's why it is called a minimum spanning tree problem. Now this is an example of a minimum spanning tree problem. State University campus has five mini computers. And then so these nodes correspond to one mini computer. And then the numbers that you see above each arc, it denotes the distance between each pair of computers. Now the requirement is that all computers must be interconnected by underground cable. Our task is to find the minimum length of cable required such that all computers are connected. This is a minimum spanning tree problem because we want to find the minimum distance of cable such that all computers are connected because the importance here is to make all computers connected certainly our final solution will be a tree it will not contain a loop because the tree will give the minimum total distance of cable that is required to connect all computers in this network let's use the mst or minimum spanning tree algorithm so in this algorithm, we begin at any node i. So you can just choose any node and then join that node that you just chose to the other node in the network. Let's say node j that is closest to node i. And then you make some um, records anytime you do this. So you record the set of connected nodes as uh, the set of big C and then um, 
you also make another set of remaining nodes in the network, call them C prime, to collect all the unconnected nodes remaining in the network. Now let's apply the first step in the MST algorithm to our problem example. So we arbitrarily choose to begin at node I. Remember that you can choose to begin at any node. Next, you try to find what is the node with the closest distance to node 1. So you check 1 to 2, the distance is 1, 1 to 3, the distance is 4, 1 to 5, the distance is 2, 1 to 4, the distance is 6. So it is obvious that 1 to 2 has the smallest distance among all possibilities going from node 1. So then you put those um, two nodes in the set of connected nodes, big C, and then the remaining nodes that has not, the remaining nodes that have not been connected, you put them all in a set of C prime. So at this moment, our C contains one and two, our C prime contains three, four, and five. In the second step, we choose a member of C prime which is the set of unconnected nodes. So we choose a member among all those unconnected nodes. We choose one node that is closest to some node in C. So C is the set of connected nodes, which means that we are now picking one member from the unconnected, which is the closest to a member in the connected. Then what we need to do is we're updating C and C prime. Let's see how it works in our example. From the first iteration, we have the set of connected nodes are 1 and 2. And then we have the set of unconnected nodes are 3, 4, and 5. So our task is try to find among these nodes, 3, 4, and 5, the closest one either to 1 or 2. Now let's take a look at um, the figure here. From all the arcs that are connected to 1 and 2, you can see that the smallest number is this 2 and also 2. And the, those arcs both belong to node 5. So we are going to connect node 5 to either 1 or 2. Here, we arbitrarily choose to connect node 5 to the network using this arc. Okay, so let me emphasize that although 5 to 1 has the distance of 2 and 5 to 2 also have a distance of 2, in one iteration, you only choose one arc. And in this example, we choose the arc from 5 to 2. Okay, let me emphasize that even though you have two arcs with the same distance, you only choose one arc. And in this case, we choose 5 to 2. Can we choose 5 to 1? Yes. So either 5 to 1 or 5 to 2, but not both. Now let's see, we just simply update that our C set now contains 1, 2, and 5, and our C prime set contains only 3 and 4 only because 1 to 5 they are already connected and then 3 and 4 they are not connected yet. Now we just keep repeating the second step until we obtain a minimum spanning tree which means that until our tree connects all the nodes in the network. You can also see um, it is written here that if we have a tie for the closest node and arc to be included in the minimum spanning tree, we may just broken the tie arbitrarily. We just saw in the previous slide that 5 to 1 and 5 to 2 have the same distance, so we just pick one arbitrarily. So from the previous iteration, we have 1 to 5 are already connected, 3 and 4, they are not connected yet. So let's check all arcs from 3 and 4 to the nodes that are already connected. So this is 6, this is 4, 
this is 3, this is 4, and this is 2. So this is the smallest distance among the unconnected node and a connected node. So that arc is selected. In other words, we are selecting node 3 to be included in the connected set. So this is how it looks like. So this is included in the minimum spanning tree. And then we have node 3 now joining the connected set. Now the remaining node in the unconnected uh, set is just node 4. So this is the end of iteration 3. And then because this is the only unconnected node, you just try to check uh, all the nodes that um, connect node 4 to any other node that has been connected. So this is uh, the distance here is 6, here is 4, this is 5. So we are going to take this arc. So the arc is 5 to 4 or 4 to 5. It's the same because it has no direction. So now we include 4 in the connected set. And now all computers in this example, they are connected by an underground cable. So we have found the optimal solution. And the minimum spanning tree consists of those arcs 1 to 2, 2 to 5, 5 to 3, and 5 to 4. And then the length of the minimum spanning tree is you simply sum the distance of all arcs um, that are connecting these nodes. So the total distance is 9. Just sum this 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4. So that was the minimum spanning tree problem and a simple algorithm to solve that problem. Next, I'm going to talk about the network simplex method. This method, as I said before, can be used to solve a minimum cost network flow problem that we saw in section 8.5. And then, as I also said before, this network simplex method We'll use the concept of a spanning tree. So see you in the next video. Thank you.